Hey guys, Max here, and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. Today we'll be going over Video Copilot's Saber plugin. Um, and I used it to make something like this, which we will make in the tutorial. Um, here we go. So, I'm going to talk over it, so there's because there's music in the background. But, as you can see, I used one of my friend's names. And I made this cool Star Wars intro thing with um, a photo, some particles, a light flare, and the Saber plugin with text. So yeah, should be pretty easy and straightforward to use. And hopefully you learn a little bit about Saber as we go. So first off, we need to open up After Effects. And before I get started, I want to highlight my pug background. This is a... Uh, my all-time favorite background right now because I absolutely love pugs. Hope you appreciate that. Thank you. Let's get started. So, I have After Effects open here. and I've got my aspect ratio set differently now, so After Effects is actually bigger on the screen. Hopefully that helps out and you enjoy that. But, let's get started. First off, we need to make a new composition. Um, so right-click New Composition and we need to make those particles we saw before. So duration is right now is at like 6 minutes and 25 seconds because that's what I had the Saber preset video done at. But we can do uh, 25 seconds. And yeah, click OK. 23 frames per second. That's pretty, it's totally fine. And we're moving. So if you take a look at the uh, the uh, video that I sent over, i to drag it over to my screen. Um, you can see particles flying in through nothing. So we're going to make those really simple. I'm pretty sure we need to go right here and click new, solid, right click new, solid, doesn't matter what color it is, we can call it particles, or I'm pretty lazy so I would just leave it as black solid, whatever. Um, go to window, effects and presets because it's not popping up right now. Let's dock it somewhere and this new aspect ratio does make everything bigger which I have less room on my screen but it's okay go to CC particle CC particle world drag it on the particles and boom it's gonna start having particles click this little toggle transparency grid on to have a black background move forward in our timeline and we have tons of particles if I hit spacebar it should just go freaking crazy yep there it goes okay so we're gonna manipulate the uh, effects of this thing and make it kind of cool. So first we'll take our birth rate, let's set it down to like one, turn our longevity up a little bit, see how that looks. Go to the physics producer, oh yeah, Y position, just kind of play with this. I forget exactly what each one does, but just jump in. Oh yeah, so the radius X and Y is what we want, just spread them out. And then um, the velocity, we're going to take that down to about 0.1. The gravity down to zero, so it's like kind of coming straight at us. If the gra gravity is turned up, they fall down because it's, it's gravity. And if the gravity is in the negative zone, it goes up. Makes sense? Makes sense. Cool. So zero, so it comes straight towards us, just like that. And then um, the birth rate, if, we, if, we do turn, if you turn the birth rate up, it just means there's more dots. You turn it down, there's less, so one is what we had it set to. Um, and then we can go to particle and switch it to shaded sphere. Or faded sphere, I mean. Let's do faded sphere and then change the color, both the colors to white. Maybe the other color to like a really light blue. Then the birth size, turn it down a lot because smaller stars look nicer. And boom. We have stars coming toward us. Next up we need is a background to play around with. <clears throat> so what I would do is, ooh, my throat's getting all shanky. Um, what I would do is just get on Google and just find an image, doesn't matter. So like, let's go to universe photo Look at all my history there. That's nice. Um, go to images. Go to search tool size large. Find something we can use. It looks pretty cool. 
That's pretty big. Come on, I want some, give me some big resolutions here. I need something big. Just quickly, quickly. What did I have in the other the video? I had something kind of cool looking. This looks awesome. 4320 by 2700. We can work with this. As long as it loads. Yeah, there we go. So right click, save image as. Save it to our desktop and we'll just drag it into the project. Nothing too crazy. And by the way, I recently updated my OS to El Capitan and um, it's working pretty good. I mean, uh, I've really noticed a lot of issues fixed with uh, After Effects and Premiere, which is really helpful. But what I just did was drag the photo into our composition and I'm putting it in the background. Right now we can just turn it off. We don't really need it. Um, next, what we'll need is a, a lens flare. So I would go back to Google and lens flare images. Um, hopefully this method of lens flaring is going to work. I'm just finding a photo to use. This is a huge one. We'll use this one. View image. Save image as. Desktop yet again. Show in Finder. And we'll just drag that bad boy right over. And we'll keep it in here for later. All right, so now on to the fun part, the text. So right click, new text. You know, my all time favorite is Babus New, but I went to defont.com and downloaded like a Star Jedi font. It's completely free and it works. We'll just type my name, Mar. <laughs> Well, Maxwell, move it over, and boom, we're going to make something cool. Then what we're going to do right off the bat is right click and convert, create mask from text. Yes, cool. Then what we'll do now is go to new solid okay well I guess we'll name it it's a good idea name saber then we'll go to effects and presets and type saber drag saber onto this because this is the saber plugin if you haven't seen it yet go to videocopilot.com and find it I'll leave a link in the description you can download it for free it's pretty freaking amazing it's basically for made for made for making lightsabers and all kinds of cool effects but let's just jump right in. So what we're gonna do is quickly go to render settings and, or excuse me, custom core and do layer mask. We're gonna take this mask, command C, paste it onto this. So I just command copied and pasted the mask onto this. So, uh, it now has a mask, and Saber will recognize mask and use itself on there. So we can go to the glow intensity at the top, turn it down, and automatically we have a pretty cool looking thing. Let's go back to our composition because it's stuck in the layer right now. Um, and it's our mask looks kind of weird right now, so what we're going to do is actually turn off Saber and kind of fix our mask up a little bit. So grab our mask tool, click on you, shift click on you, and move you over. Nope, nope, I want you. We're just kind of moving the mask over to a line at a point here. So um, when our effect is playing, it doesn't look all funky. Come on, pen tool. That is not the pen tool. Pen tool. Pen tool. Click on you. Add a point there so we can move this back right here. Hopefully you can keep up with what I'm doing. Oh no, we need a point right here. I'm just moving the mask from overlapping itself because when the uh, saber effect we create is going on there, it's going to look really funny if it, this overlaps. I've been there, done that, I promise. So I'm adding these points so when I tilt it, this line doesn't move. And we should be good now. All right, cool.
tool. So we can turn our saber effect back on and click this little button right here to hide the mask. This little button turns the mask on and off so it doesn't get in the way and we can already see it looks pretty cool. Awesome. So what we'll do is actually take our glow spread, actually browse through the presets. So at the top there's a bunch of presets you can browse through. I have a video up of every single preset. It's kind of a shameless video, but I figured I'd post it. I think people pretty much appreciate this kind of videos of all the different presets just so you can watch it. I enjoyed making it. Also put in the project file if you want to download it. That's pretty cool, I guess. So there's all these different cool presets to uh, play around with. With the saber, you can just kind of browse through and if you play it, I mean, they all look pretty damn cool. So, excuse my language. But jumping right back in, we'll go back to the, uh, I think neon was pretty cool. Neon, neon. Turn the glow intensity down some. And we are going to customize this bad boy. So go to our start size and bring it down some. Start offset, bring it up. Um, end offset, bring it down to about right here. Alpha mode, mass core. Pretty sure it's mass core. It goes. Not mass core, but mass glow, which makes the glow from the glow intensity only affect the mask, so it doesn't actually fall off. So if you enable mask, or if you disable it, it glows everywhere. If you enable mask, and it looks like mask glow, it also works too. So we want this effect. And then what we'll do is we will keyframe it. So we got this first part done. Both the ends are tapered down, so it looks kind of like this. So when it's going, it's like that. And what we'll do is keyframe the mask evolution. Scroll down in our timeline, 25 seconds, and move it a bunch of times. Like, keep rolling so it just does that. And if you click U on your keyboard to see your kick saber keyframes, we just made two keyframes that just do this. And what we need to do is speed this bad boy up for about to 15 seconds. And it's obviously not moving fast enough, so what we'll do is actually delete this keyframe. And we'll do it 12 times. That looks a lot better, moving much faster. Now if we go back to our old video, kind of check out what it looked like exactly. Scroll forward in the timeline. Looks just like that. So what we can do really quick is we command D duplicate the saber layer, um, go into the color and change it. Let's pick like, it was pink, let's do some kind of blue. And then what we'll do is go to mode, screen. Let's do screen on the layer before it as well so the background shows. And what we'll do is click U on Saber 2, which turned back to Black Solid 1 for some reason. That is fantastic. And what we'll do is we will take the mask evolution, set it back to zero, with no keyframes. And we will rotate it to where it's kind of on the opposite side. Go to U on this one just to see how far it goes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, yep. Then we'll move this to somewhere around 12 as well, so it moves at the same time. So it ends up right here. So they're kind of chasing each other, just like that. Sweet. What we'll do now is go back to our project, find that lens flare, drop it on top, go to mode, screen, and get T and kind of kill it down a lot. What we'll do is kind of put it like right there. Hit R to rotate it a little bit. 
right back there. Maybe we'll put it in the background. Turn our universe picture back on. Click T. Turn it down some. You get into this thing. It looks pretty good. What we're going to do is it's kind of the final step in this little process. Right click new camera. Click OK. And make everything a 3D layer. But make this layer parent to the black solid so the masks actually do the exact same thing we tell them to do. Assuming we move them. Turn all my 3D layers on. And actually move stuff. So what we'll do is move the universe back some. Move the lens flare out in front. I'll move it back. Not a big deal. Move this right here. Then we'll hit P on position on our camera. Keyframe to position. Go forward in the timeline to about, I guess, 15 seconds and move the camera forward. And yeah. And let it play. Just like that. Real quick, real easy. Probably took a little longer than expected, but I enjoyed talking to you guys and I hope you enjoyed it too. I didn't keep the keyframes going past here, but if we go back to our old one and let it play, looks like I spent a little more time on this one, so it's a little more, you know, polished, but I think you get the picture of how I created this. I think the birth rate on the particles is way too high. That's probably why. Let's go like 0.2. That looks a little better. You can actually get to going a little faster. Cool. So you can play around with it, have some fun. The actual lens flare probably bright it up a little bit with T like that so like as it gets a little brighter you keyframe it at 0% go down the timeline and make it a lot brighter as you get closer so as you're playing along it's like the Sun's getting brighter as you go let's go to half and see if it plays back pretty well good fit a little too close struggling a little bit but it's rendering fairly well not bad but I think you get the gist um, this is a quick little tutorial on how to make a Star Wars thing I did not add in the music because that would be wrong I don't own the rights to that music it's just for fun but I can link a, leave a link in the description if you want to find that music for the little Star Wars intro just comment I'll put it in the description it's not a big deal I downloaded it from like a YouTube video or something. It's just for fun. Educational purposes only. I made it to make my friend laugh. He thought it was awesome. He almost cried when he saw it. His name all Star Wars up. But yeah, this is a little cool way to use the Saber plugin to make a wrap around your texts. Um, but uh, yeah. As always, guys, I'm Max. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment, and I will try to respond. And yeah, check out my uh, videos with my face in them. I did some film tech tutorial, not tutorials, but film tech reviews. And um, I just did a video on using stock music for your films. So I listed some really cool websites. I think I listed something like six websites that were really cool that you can download stock audio. And the last website is my all-time favorite. So go check out that uh, video and uh, have a good time. Other than that, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Peace.